G'day, Walter. Thanks for coming on the episode, mate. Sure, man. I'm glad to be here. So uh, this is all about uh, me putting myself in your shoes and me making some commentary about what I would do if I was in your situation. So um, right. why don't we uh, hear a little bit about your uh, journey up until now? And then uh, once we once we cover that, then it'll become clear as to how I might be able to make some suggestions. Sure. Um, yeah, I was clinically diagnosed in, I guess it was January of 2014. Um, just a big flaring episode. And then this, I, then they started to fall like dominoes, you know, different. Um, CRP set rates went up into mid 150. Whoa. It was, yeah, yeah, mm. I was really sick. Um, uh, got to the point where I couldn't even roll, roll over in bed. Couldn't even move, move myself. My wife had to roll me over in bed. Um, that was the first year. The first year I didn't take any medication. I tried to go holistically. Um, then my anemia, blood anemia got so bad. Um, started losing massive amounts of weight. Uh, and then finally, so then I had to go on a biologic. Yep. And then then started, well, I guess I took methotrexate first. Mm -hmm. um, we tried that, which is very successful. Um, and I have, I, I'm horrible with drugs, like most people, but I'm so successful. I had to take a baby dose of everything. Um, and then started down the path, man, of what, the what, side effects. What were your side effects of uh, methotrexate? All the common stuff oh, like fatigue and the feeling of toxicity and liver problems? Yeah, for sure. Uh, fatigue was the main one. Yeah. I mean, I was t in order to take this drug, they gave me colonzepan, and I would take a colonzepan pill, and I would shove the pill in my mouth right before I literally passed out from the colonzepan in order to take the med medication. That's how terrified I was of taking medication. So I would literally induce myself with clonzepan, then take the medication. And then for a week later, it was just misery. Mm. Um, yeah, I think just fatigue. I'd be in public and have to sit down and fall asleep in public. Yep. Just massive fatigue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it means the same story. Mm. Um, then, came, then came the embryo, the, the biologic. I didn't have a choice. My blood anemia was really getting so bad that we had to pull the trigger on something. Um, you know, that was one of the worst days of my life, having decided to put that, inject that stuff into my you know, in my body. Um, that horrible reaction the first time, vertigo, dizzy, took me weeks to finally get to where I could take a shot. And I was taking the 25 milligrams just once a week. I was taking half a dose and still just laboring to get through it. Um, and what were the side effects of that one? Of Embryo? Of Embryo. Uh, boy, it, like massive hangover. I'd take it and then for 48 hours, I mean, it was hard to get out of bed, just nausea, dizziness, ears mm. ringing. Um, and just that I, I call it the wet blanket. It was like just a wet blanket would come over me and I would just morose down the dumps for three or four days. And <laughs> finally, I, as I'd peel out of it, it was time for the next shot. And it's just like, oh no, not again. And you know, you're like, it's the same thing. And you're like, wow, okay. But, <laughs> but you know, the doctors have told you that your fingers are going to curl up. No, going to happen. So you're terrified not to take it. You know, and I mean, it shows what for me, these drugs show what level of pain people have to be in to read those side effects and still willingly inject it into your body. I mean, most people would look at that and go, not a chance in hell would I possibly put that in my body. So I think it proves, should prove to people just how desperate you get to be willing to inject this stuff into your body. Yeah, well said. You know? Yeah, you know, mm. and, 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 it, and it did have some effect. It got me out of a dark place. It did, as far as arthritis, not emotionally wise, no. Emotionally, I was a wreck from the drugs. But then my body eventually built up an, an immunity to it. And then actually the injection started causing more arthritis pain than it was taking away. Right. Um, but pain to my chest everywhere. So we went off it. And then my doctor recommended one of the worst decisions I've ever made. He said, let's try Humira. And Humira came on very close to killing me almost. It was insane. Um, I injected the Humira within three hours. It was a, all the progress I had made. Because I, I had been following the Patterson program since December of last year. So I'd made a lot of progress. And then within three hours, I took the shot. It began uh, shaking, fever, hives, all came from one shot of Humira. And then within s five days, every bit of arthritis that I had gained reset to the very level I had at the very beginning. Oh my and that was, a set, that was a setback that was really tough to take because I'd made all this progress, worked so hard. And then in one fail swoop and one shot, I went back seven months and had to start all over again. So I really had to regroup and my wife had to help me regroup and get the courage to just start over again. And so now I have, and now, and so that, 
so basically that's where we stand now. And then I'm sorry, I, I took that. So then they tried to put me back. They, 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 I tried. Oh God, Alyssa, what was the pill? Cell and then they put me on cell gens. So I tried that. Oh yeah, yeah cell yeah, gens yeah, came. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that came with massive nausea, um, constipation, used everything. You know, and I didn't want to take that because I didn't want to put anything else to harm the, my intestinal lining. So mm -hmm. I'm like, I tell the doctor, I don't want to take anything that, that's, you know, because one of the side effects is tears in the intestinal lining. I'm like, that's what I'm trying to heal myself from, you know? So anyway, long story short, to try to shorten a little bit, sorry. Um, so I I couldn't take that. So they tried Embril one more time. Oh, yeah. Took three more shots. Yeah, because the doctor's like, because he couldn't give me Remicade, because that stuff's ter terrifying. And I, I was such a poor drug taker anyway. So I eventually, then they put me on pal palaquinel, which is that yeah. anti, mm -hmm. yeah, that an anti, yeah. Mm -hmm. The fatigue with the fatigue with that was just as equal to methotrexate. methotrexate. Mm -hmm. So finally, I just said, okay, this is it. It's time to take my leap, leap, leap of faith. Went off all my drugs, and my CRP and sed rate dropped twenty points. Just by when I cut the drugs, it was amazing. There it was, and so now I take. I take I, I, ibuprofen as needed. Yep. Um, most recently, I went five weeks without any ibuprofen, no medication at all. Wow. But, yeah, there, there are times when I still get, I mean, if I get a really bad flare, which yep. is not often, yep. because it's all food-related, yep. um, I'll have to take it for a day or two, but I, I take two Advil in the morning, and that's all I take all day when I, when I have to take it. So Right, right. Mate, so well, that's yeah, where I'm at. That's <laughs> quite the, uh, it's quite the summary right there. Um, yeah. You pretty much went through the entire entire medis, medical cabinet right then. Oh, I, I took everything that they had to give me. I, I mean, because yeah. I mean, I, I failed everything. I kept failing every medication, so I just kept yeah. oh, here's another one, here's another one. I yeah. kept failing them. I mean, yeah. dramatically failing them. And mm. so, only mm. but but the whole time I was eating correctly. The whole time. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I I took tons of pictures of food I was going to send to you one day and say, mm. look, here's my all with my with my bok choy, and so yeah. I have tons of photos of, of yeah. my food. So. Um, so the whole time I'm doing this, I'm actually healing my, 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 my intestine slowly during the time. I'm going through all this madness and underneath it all, it's, it's working, you know, cause I mean, I ferment my own cabbage and make my own pro probiotics. And so underlying it. So then when I went off all the medication, I found myself in a much better place than I thought because it's actually been working behind the scenes and, you know, so. Yeah, that is fantastic. So that's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. when was the last time then you were on one of the heavy drugs, not the ibuprofen, but when was the last time you were on the prescription stuff? Seven months. The last time I did. Uh, no, Embro was probably four months ago. Okay, four months ago. All right. So, the last time so um, does your C reactive protein and sed rate nicely track it, uh, and and corres correspond with your inflammation, or do you find that it's it's a, a, a useless measure? No, no, no. I, I think I think it's a it's 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 a good way to to measure, yeah. and, and it's it's pretty accurate with it with how I'm fe feeling. There have been times I've gone to get to to, to get get my labs done, and I've been able to guess within ten points of what they're going to be. I'm Man. like, oh, I guarantee you, I'm this this, and right there it was. Okay. You know? Well, that is exactly <laughs> how I was. Exactly. Like I yeah, really? get, yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, once once I was getting sort of between the ones and two milligram per liter. You know, I would say to my wife, you know, when I would always try and predict it, I would say, I think I'm a 1.7. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, and, but yeah, it was a game I played. Yeah, yeah exactly. I was usually right. Exactly, yeah. Um, and, um, and so that is highly useful because a lot of people who um, go through this process, uh, not a, you know, it, it's a smaller percentage, but it's still significant. Um, people's C-reactive proteins just aren't very useful for their disease measure. So some people, for instance, can be really highly inflamed and have very low C-reactive protein and very low sed rate. In fact, totally normal even when they're highly inflamed. And so that's even worse uh, situation because uh, it makes it hard to get that quantitative monthly measurement of how you're doing. But it's still possible, but you have to use other measures. Um, and so it's not, as, um, it's not as good as having the perfect uh, number every month to look at. Yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah, man. So how how what's um, the, I, how's the best way then for us to uh, to spend the next little while? Uh, how can I be? How can I get you to the next level? Well, I tell you what, I, you caught me on a really amazing day. As I just made a pretty pretty uh, phenomenal 
I, I guess uh, when you're doing this program with your program and uh, I draw from McDougal, I draw from you, I draw from Forks Over Knives, what, everything you can. I think you really have to collectively pull together. Um, is I finally figured out that white rice, because that became a staple of my diet, and the starch in the rice. So I switched over to brown rice and I've had a really big, it's crazy. What was happening is I was eating the rice and it was, and it was getting like this sugar crush because mm -hmm. it was metabolizing really, really fast. Mm -hmm. So then I would crave sugar at night. Like, oh, anyway, so I twist forever and that has been a huge impact the last two days. I mean, I've noticed a lot less in the morning, a lot less stiffness in the morning. Um, so, yeah, so you caught me on a day where I've just had a really big discovery, you know? I mean, I'm constantly, always, constantly, every day researching. I mean, I think you have to when you when you do this. I mean, you, you, you can get stuck in a pattern of eating the same thing and expecting results, but I think I mean, if you go a week or a week and a half and nothing's really changed, then it's time to relook at your diet and what do I switch around and what do I move? And I think you constantly have to be kind of putting the chess pieces together and constantly working at it. I mean, nothing is going to work all the time perfectly, you know, if that makes sense. Absolutely. If I'm saying that. Yeah, right. Um, yeah, so the Patterson program was the piece of the puzzle that I really was needing, and I think it was the real structure of it for, for me. Um, sometimes the juices I can't handle, sometimes the smoothies I can't handle, sometimes I can. Um, sometimes it's a little too much on, 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 on my stomach. Yeah, sometimes um, it just ends up coming out uh, the other end, huh? Well, it, it just, it would kind of nauseate me some a little bit. Yeah. I, I'm highly sensitive. It's, it's so crazy. detoxing. Um, I mean, it's just, you know, you've got all oh, this, you've got all this chlorophyll hitting the bloodstream. You've got all of these greens. There's just so much green goodness hitting. It's can't, it's totally detoxing. Um, yeah. Um, so that's no surprise. Um, let me, before we move on, let me just make a quick comment. Um, so there's no doubt about it that uh, that brown rice is a healthier version of rice. There's no doubt about that brown yeah. is healthier than white. Um, and it was one of the um, true counterintuitive parts of putting my program together to schedule white rice before brown rice oh, in, yeah. in the hierarchy yeah. of introductions, right? Um, but yeah. if we're talking about, um, and I even think this applies to you, um, if we talk about uh, you know trying to make a program that can be as close as working for everyone as you can get, um, yeah. I, I feel that it's still the right order to go from a white rice oh, okay. before moving on to the brown. And I call it graduate. Uh, you know, you graduate to get yeah. to the brown rice sure. um, because right. of its, um, it's, it comes back to an acidity um, a, a angle, I believe. It's, it's very tricky to explain, but I believe the reason is because the brown rice is far more acidifying for the body than what the white is. Right. Um, and, and, um, and I think that's part of it. And there are other benefits for having white as well uh, in the early stages is because um, it, you can eat a lot of it and get a lot of calories from it. Yeah, and for sure. One of the yeah. biggest challenges that people face is that they feel that they're underweight or they're not eating enough food. White's easy to get in much more bigger quantities because with brown, you always chew, 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 chew. Yeah, 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 for sure. <laughs> and so... Yeah. And so I just want, you know, for the benefit of people wondering about, oh, maybe some people will say to me, oh, maybe I should switch straight to the brown. Well, you know, no, if, no. yeah, if, you know, that's where we all want to end up, but we have to, we have to do our time, you know? Well, yeah. I mean, I, I call it like sharpening. I'm sharpening the knife and getting to the end of the spear. And so white rice was right. And now as I'm getting better and healing more, I'm finding I'm kind of having to rearrange a couple of things. And brown rice was a thing. I agree, white rice was perfect. But as I get better, I'm learning I'm having to change things a little bit to modify a little bit perfect. to kind of move along with where I'm, I'm going. That's so, awesome. So, yeah, man. I think white rice is definitely right. And, you know, here in the States, we're so protein crazy. Yeah. It's so hard. I mean, it's, it's, it's just insane in this country. I mean, the first thing you ever, ever, ever asked me on the past program, where do you get your protein? How do you get protein? I'm like, I get plenty of protein. I don't eat meat. Oh, how do you get protein? I mean, it's just so ingrained by the by the beef industry that, you know, you should have this yeah. much protein. So same yeah. like with, with, with so many other things, yeah. you know, so you, white rice is, is great. I didn't mean to in any way. No, nah, no. I and, and, stuck the plan, but it, but it was, it got me to where I'm at. And now it's just a next logical step, mm -hmm. which was to kind of switch, switch, switch over. Beautiful. All right. Yeah. Well, um, 
what uh, th- this is all it, instead of this sounding like a uh, what I would do situation, it sounds more like a uh, success story situation. I think that it, to a large extent, it actually is because you're on no drugs. It's been four months since you've taken any, and you've been five weeks yep. without an ibuprofen. I mean, your situation is e- extremely rare. If you look at a if you look at a graph, a distribution graph of where people are mm-hmm. with this disease uh, in terms of like how many are medicated, how many are non-medicated um how many have like you know elevated uh inflammation levels the component that would be on zero drugs with an established condition because you're january 2014 so at the time we're recording this like you're uh you know you're what's that uh two and a half years or coming towards three years um you know you're you're in a 0.5 percent percentile bracket like you're 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 not even like one in a hundred it's more more rare than that okay so <laughs> yeah. it's pretty remarkable yeah. yeah well you know i remember listening to danny and one thing that really stuck with me he's, he's like i take this on like it's my job beating arthritis is like it's my job i do it every day and i went to that immediately and every day my goal is in that day, what can I do to beat this RA? And it's food choices and a pedestal program. And so it's not slipping up. It's not making – and the reason I'm having success is because you have to be diligent with this. I mean, you really have to be diligent. I mean, RA is relentless. You have to be more relentless with staying the course and doing it correctly and, eat, and like make every bite right. I mean, I'll tell my wife, I'll eat, and I'll, go, I'll, I'll say Clint would be proud of me. Because I'm literally, every food, I got a big bowl of greens, and every bite I'm shoving greens in my mouth at the same time. And But it is, collectively, each meal at a time. It's not, and then it ends up being a whole body of work. But you have to look at every single one as another chance to heal your body. And that's how you can have success. I, and that's how I've had success, is by not just going, oh, you know, maybe this week I won't do this. Well, that week, and you're right, and in the program you talk about getting set back and getting in, in a healing groove and how long it can take once you get knocked out of it. Mm-hmm. That happened to me once or twice. And I was like, it's like, no, and you were exactly right in talking about that in your program and getting knocked out of a groove. Wow. And you desperately try to get back in it. Then when you're in it, I finally learned, just don't get out of it. That's it. <laughs> just, yeah, just, just keep working. A hundred percent, a hundred percent, man. Um, this is, uh, you know, I can, I can picture you on stage explaining all this stuff because your understanding <laughs> of it and your, you know, a uh, way of explaining it is is outstanding. So, uh, um, you know, this is this is fabulous stuff. Um, it is every day. It's like what I used to ask myself the question: What can I do right now to improve my health and lower my pain levels? And then, once I took that action, I then said, "What else can I do right now?" Yes, and that was it what? all the time because yeah. no one else is going to offer a solution that is acceptable. And so it's up to us to deploy the the rocket launches that we can against this problem. <laughs> right. I mean, I, I I I took what they had to give me. I took all the drugs. I said, okay, I'll do it. On, and I said, okay, now I've seen what you have to offer, and I know that there's no hope in the bottom of that bottle or that injection. I know there's not. I mean, you could feel it. So. I mean, you have to take on like the Patterson program or any program with almost like a religious fervor. You have to truly believe, in my mind, you have to truly, when you wake up in the morning, go, I can really heal myself from this disease. And you have to believe it. Not just a frivolous, like, well, this might work, this might not work. I mean, you really have to, in your believe, because that gives you the power to every day. When everyone's going out to eat and you're sitting there and you have one strawberry and one blueberry, and everyone else is eating and having fun and all these different things. Everyone's having drinks and you're having a glass of water. It's all these things that, you know, as your life changes and you have to, that belief system that you, that I will be the better is what you have to have to get you through those moments. And that's, and that's what I did. I mean, and, and, and that's why at the past program, when I saw that guy, Danny, I saw that. And I saw a guy who said, I'm willing to do anything. And that's why I turned me onto your program and your program really kind of, offers that and i've watched a lot of your videos as well and you kind of portray that same thing like you gotta you gotta eat it live it breathe it sleep it to do it or yeah. in order to get and I, i'm not trying to be preachy but that's how i've had success yeah is by yeah is accepting it you know and and first i think first and foremost above all this is 
people have to accept the fact that they have our and accept some personal responsibility for it. I know that sounds, I'm not trying to get preachy, but that's when it changed for me. When I said, hey, maybe through my diet, maybe through all the antibiotics I was given in my life and all these things that maybe this has happened. Not, not, if you can't, if you pay them water and say, oh, poor me, oh, look, you know, bad luck, I got this, then you'll, then you'll stay a martyr and you won't do anything. But if you take some personal responsibility and say, hey, maybe I have this, then it'll give you the power to, to fight it. Yeah, 100%. One thing that's, a, <laughs> one thing that's a, a, of a personal passion of mine at the moment, one of the mini projects amongst things that I'm doing, is the sense that, that antibiotic use, overuse of antibiotics is actually the, the number one trigger for people with RA. So, um, can That's you just me. can you just tell me uh, how much antibiotics uh, you took prior yeah. to diagnosis? Yeah, um, I mean, a the distribution of antibiotics in this country is prolific. Um, I had uh, inherited prostatitis from my father, and prostatitis. I don't get too much into it, but it's a very painful disease. Um, they believe now it's all autoimmune. Anyway, the only thing they had for it was Cipro, big Cipro antibiotics. They'd start you on a regimen of that. I'd go 10 months, oh, 11 man. months on Cipro. I did this for four years. I spent probably a total of three years of my life on an antibiotic, a big, scary antibiotic. And no one told me anything about you know, probiotics. Anything. Yeah. So I'm eating this every day. And look, and then also my indigestion is starting to get worse. So I go to the doctor, hey, man, I'm getting indigestion. Oh, well, here's a, here's a, uh, what, what is it? Uh, a protein pump inhibitor. I'm like, okay, something's going wrong. So my body was telling me. So I, every day, I just keep taking the antibiotics. And I, it, to, to no avail. It never helped my condition once. So I had wiped out everything in my body, and then I was putting nothing back in and still eating the, the, the standard yeah. American diet. Yeah. So I'm eating the same American diet, and my gut is just in terrible, terrible shape, dude. And yeah. so, but not, not just that. I mean, you go in with a cold here. They will instantly write you antibiotics. Mm. You're like, well, what? They're like, well, what if it's viral? I mean, what mm. if like, yeah. it doesn't? They're like, well, they're like, well, it can't hurt. Right. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so like, so no matter what, what you go in for, you're going to walk out with antibiotics. Mm. And the idea of like, well, it can't hurt you. Yeah. And that's what's happened. So for me, I guarantee you, what started my problem was just those years and years of that Cipro that really. Hundred percent. I I would. You know, and this is the sort of thing that you can't really get called out on because no one can really prove it. But I feel absolutely certain that that's what caused your rheumatoid. And, I agree. Yeah, so, and, and because I took antibiotics for five years for my acne okay. as a teenager. Oh, that's right. Okay, that's right. And then, and then I had indigestion issues just like you. Yep. I was seeing naturopaths and homeopaths throughout my late 20s because I thought... I, I don't digest food very well, and I always get like a blocked nose. I can't breathe through my nose when I eat certain foods, right? Are, are, are you kidding me? It's exactly the same thing. My nose, exactly the same thing. Every, <laughs> I eat certain foods, and I'm, couch, I'm like, can't breathe, yeah, honey. Can't breathe. <laughs> and for me, if, if I ate ice cream, it would happen within minutes, minutes of eating ice cream. Yeah. Instantly. Yeah. Yes. Exactly yeah. the same thing. And and you know I, I and I kept doing it and then and then I went to Iraq to uh, to entertain the troops over there and uh, of course the uh, the um, treatment that they give you as an anti malarial is low dose doxycycline which was the exact drug that I had been taking for my acne as a teenager and within six months I had RA so I believe in well, that yeah <clears throat> I failed to mention that I did try I think it's called the road back which was yes. doxycycline. Yes. I did I did that for about two months. And that was thank goodness I got away from that. But I mean that that was in my searching for everything mm -hmm. for RA and mm -hmm. tried that and and that, so I was just hurting myself, you know. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize it. It's it can anyway. be dangerous, yeah. Um, you know, I've got my so personal I, views on that. So yeah, you know so I, I, <laughs> You and I, you and I seem like kindred spirits. It seemed like we went yeah, through the out. same exact process because it also seems that your body responds. Uh, well, I won't even say it in that way. I was going to say your body responds well, like mine did. My, this this has taken you a tremendous effort. There's not, been nothing easy about what you've achieved, and there was no quick wins for me at all. I had zero no. quick quick wins. It was slowest as possible wins that you could ever. It almost losing the whole time and some occasional wins. That's what it, it was like for me. 
it's one step forward, five step back. One mm-hmm. step forward, five steps back. But you just got to be thankful you got one step forward. That's and I it. Mean, look, because I, I also had Baker cyst. I forgot to mention, I had the same thing. I had Baker cyst in my knees, and then they ruptured, went down into my legs. So, yeah, I had the Baker cyst in both knees. It was, man, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so, I would, yeah. so, yeah, so we have, there's a lot, a lot of parallels for sure. So, so um, many, so yeah. many. Well, but oh, it's, with, it's, with regards, it's slow. Yeah, with regards to... Uh, to uh, our our time here, um, is yeah. there anything you'd like to 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 run past me before we uh, we 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 wind up here? I guess so. As far as like juices and stuff, I mean, as far as sugar and fruit, I mean, so sometimes I I guess I struggle sometimes with with I mean I I is it better to take it like I, I like to eat my spinach and eat these things. And I know juices are a big part. I guess smoothies are a big part of, of, of the program is, is basically is macerating the vegetables. I mean, the fruit, I mean, the, is it, does that make it easier to digest? I mean, should, should yeah. I, should, should, should I be eating it as a salad or should I be eating them uh, as a, so, so, so yeah. Um, so the answer to that is, uh, is pretty clear. Actually, this is a, this is pretty, a one that we can have a fair degree of certainty about. So, yeah. Um, um, you mentioned Danny before, one of our sort of superstars who's been so yeah. helpful to everyone in our community forum yeah, as sure. well. I mean, the guy's a legend, right? So yeah, sure. he, he, for a period of time, was just living off smoothies and he's, he created his own variety. He would actually put, um, he would cook his oatmeal and then put that in with his smoothie. And oh, he, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sure. So he turned his smoothies into complete meals. Um, so, but let me just answer with regards to, uh, Dr. Greger from nutritionfacts.org, he did a video where he said, is it better to eat your greens or put them through a blender, right, in a smoothie format? Yeah. And I think it's one of the only, one of the very few cases that I can actually um, refer to where the processing of the greens in the smoothie um, machine, like a Vitamix, for instance, actually gave more bioavailability to the nutrients and had more uptake of those of, of the nutrients than okay. what it just did from eating. And, gotcha. and as a result, people also were able to actually consume more greens, which we know has no benefit and an unlimited benefit. Sorry, no downside and an unlimited yeah, benefit. Right. Yeah. Oh. Okay. So, and with regards to... Um, with regards to having, uh, you know, thinking about eating them all the time, for me, they were a big diuretic. I would find if I ate more than too many green smoothies, I was just going to the toilet a lot and it just became ridiculous. I thought, like, yeah, right. is, you know, this is not yeah. really, yeah. And so um, I found that if I had a green smoothie as a um, drink with my main meal, then I actually treated that as my salad. And so oh, yeah. what you can do is if you have, um, sorry, and I have got an incoming call on the next, uh, for the next uh, chat here in a oh, moment. Yeah. yeah. So sorry. I'll just get to them in a second. Um, so what, what you can try is to uh, eat them with food, the green smoothies, because fruit yeah. and the greens mixed together can go with a meal when there's no animal products in the meal. There's no problem with that. Oh, yeah, so, for sure. Yeah, give that a go and you'll get more greens in and you'll get some great, um, you know, phytonutrients through the um, the berries and go for it. So okay. my belief is that the lowest, the starting point, the most lowest irritating um, green smoothie is baby spinach and blueberries. If you put that, uh, yeah, you put that combo uh, together, you've got one of the most uh, uh, nutrient-dense, dense health promoting things in terms of berries with the most anti-inflammatory food you can eat, which is the baby spinach. And you put them together and drink that with your meal as your side instead of a, um, instead of a bowl of greens. And not only is it feeling like you're having a treat, but you're just getting so much benefit from pain relief as well. I did because I eat blueberries in the morning with my oatmeal and I have spinach later in the day. So I just start combining them. If you want to, I mean, this is this is just in response to your question about smoothies. It sounds to me yeah, like, yeah, you know, you might need not to might not need to tweak too much right now. You might just need to continue to implement things how you are. 
um, you know, and continue how you're going because you're only four months off the meds and, you know, your body's still adjusting. But, yeah, mate, and what I'd like to to do is uh, um, we can chat offline, but I'd like you to uh, come and join us for a month in in our membership and I'll give you some coaching and help you out in there as well and you can chat to Danny as well. And uh, yeah, you, guys, right. you guys can hook up, and uh, I think that'll be, yeah, be that'll be nice, and you'll inspire a lot of people because your results are, are really uh, really powerful for for other people as well. well. That's 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 one of the driving things I have is one to look at my doctor in the face and say I told you so, and B is to help people. I mean, is to be able to to, to to if I can help spark someone else, that would be one of the biggest benefits of of. of getting rid of this disease is to help be able to help somebody else. Well, I can promise you that there are people right now, whether they be on their treadmills or in their car or on their way to work, <laughs> who are loving hearing you talk about your progress and everything that you've been through because it's not okay. been all in vain. It hasn't just been a big painful exercise. There is a future for you to help people <laughs> and inspire people. And um, at some point, I would love to invite you uh, to a live event one day and speak in person because you 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 and I you and I share so much and it just com- compounds and accentuates all the messages and experiences that I've had and that's really really powerful for my message. Oh yeah, I'll help yeah. you any way I can. I would love to talk to anybody. I'd love to do it. I mean, that's one of those things. Is all the days when you're going through this is the eye on the prize kind of thing. Is one day is to help people. I mean, I know the dark hole that I was in one time. When I all felt hopeless and dreary and this is never going to change and I can't take one more day of this. And if I could help someone just shine a light into that spot and say, look, I'm standing here. My set rate was this and say, look, I, I did it. I came through the world, the wilderness. I'm standing here and I promise you, you know, it's not easy. I know it means it's easy, but, but it can be done. And that was just great, you know, tremendous satisfaction mm-hmm. in helping someone. Well, as I said, you're already doing it. So you hold hold that hold that <laughs> hold that feeling. Hold the feeling yeah. that you've got right now in that moment when you picture that because that is exactly what I pictured and you are on that path. So That's awesome. Thank That's you, great. man. So I would sure. love, I would love to talk to you longer, but um I have got to get to a next uh talk. So we will stay in touch online. Email me and I'll hook you up. Okay, that sounds awesome, Glenn. Thanks so much again. Thanks, brother. Okay. See you. Bye-bye. Bye.